last Sunday, Lara shared a very rich talk about prayer practice. In Wan Buddhism, prayer is equivalent to the term Buddha offering, Bulgong. Would you say the word? Bulgong, Buddha offering. Similar to the role of a prayer in Christianity as a central way to pay homage to God, in Buddhism, a Buddha offering is a central way to humble ourselves and pay homage to Buddha. Traditional Asian Buddha offerings usually focus on bowing and praying to Buddha images and offering flowers, money, incense, candles, and food. In one Buddhism, however, we try to embody everywhere a Buddha image. Every act, a Buddha offering. Our founding teacher taught us that all things in the universe are transformation bodies of the Dharma Kaya Buddha. Therefore, we find a Buddha everywhere, and all our acts of compassion and kindness become Buddha offerings. There is a well-known story about Buddha offerings from the early days of One Buddhism. We often turn the story into a skit during youth camps. Here it is. Once, while the founding master Su San was residing in, at Pongne Hermitage, an elderly couple passed by and told him about their daughter-in-law. They said, our daughter-in-law is ill-tempered and unfilial, so we are on our way to Shilsang Monastery to make a Buddha offering about this situation. Upon hearing their problem, the founding master said to them, How is it that you know to make a Buddha offering to the Buddha image, but not to the living Buddha? The elderly couple asked, Where is the living Buddha? Sutesan replied, The daughter-in-law who lives at your home is the living Buddha, since she is the one who can choose to be either filial or unfilial. Why don't you try making an offering to her? They asked, how? How should we make such an offering? So Tesan answered, With the money you are going to use for the Buddha offering at the temple, buy her a gift she would appreciate, and treat her with the same respect you would the Buddha. Then, depending on how sincere you are, the effect of your Buddha offering will appear. When the couple returned home, they did as he suggested. In a few months, their daughter-in-law did indeed become kind and respectful. Who knew? The elderly couple returned to the founding master and thanked him over and over. Sotesan said to his disciples, This is a pragmatic Buddha offering made directly to a specific object of transgression and blessing. Sophie, hearing the story, asked me, is this a real story? <laughs> I said, yes. This is a pragmatic Buddha offering made directly to a specific object of transgression and blessing. Pragmatic Buddha offering. What does pragmatic mean? According to the dictionary, pragmatic means dealing with things sensibly and realistically 
based on practical rather than theoretical considerations. So Tae-san said, the daughter-in-law who lives at your home is the living Buddha. What did he mean by living Buddha? This means their daughter-in-law, not the Buddha image at the Silsang Monastery, had the power to directly respond to their Buddha offering. The elderly couple was reminded that the relationship with their daughter-in-law is the very source of their happiness or unhappiness. In one Buddhism, the content of ill one sang, one circle, representing truth. The content of ill one sang is the fourfold grace which encompasses all things in the universe. Therefore, there is nothing in heaven and earth that is not Buddha. The daughter-in-law is a Buddha. Everywhere a Buddha, every act a Buddha offering. The object of a faith and the place we pray is not limited to churches, synagogues, or temples. Buddha offering to a stone pot. In the temple kitchen, we have a small stone pot we love to cook with. The stone pot can get really hot, so we often burn food when we are distracted by doing or thinking of something else. Understanding the nature of this pot, we can enjoy warm food without burning it. But we, if we don't honor the nature of this pot, we end up burning food. I can smell the burning food from my room. <laughs> Every object in our kitchen and home can bring us blessings or transgressions, depending on how we use it. In one Buddhism, treating each object in a mindful and respectful way is a Buddha offering, pulgong. This Buddha offering is also applied to people in our lives. During the past two months, my 17-year-old niece, Sophie, stayed in our temple. And I tried to treat her with a loving care and respect. But as a parent figure, I could also sometimes be a little too controlling. In order to extend Buddha offerings to her, I realized that I needed to appreciate that she is not a child anymore and to trust her mature discernment. Working together with the Reverend Young and Reverend Sean, I often contemplate on what skillful and compassionate Buddha offerings I can make to them. This effort guides my focus to the grace and good work they are doing rather than my own expectations. We can make pragmatic Buddha offerings in our everyday lives by honoring and respecting every person and every object we encounter. So dear friends, deeply listen to the needs of your beloved spouse children and parents and respond to them skillfully and appropriately. Or simply smile at a stranger. Buddha offerings may not always be peaceful and delightful. They can require hard work, earnest effort and prayer especially when we work with challenging situations. But Sotesan reminds us, depending on how sincere we are, the effect of our offerings will appear. One day, a student asked Sotesan, other than pragmatic Buddha offerings, are there any other way making Buddha offering? 
The founding master replied, "There are two methods of making Buddha offerings. The first is a pragmatic offering made directly to a specific person or object of the fourfold grace. The second is a Buddha offering to truth." Made to the Dharma Kaya Buddha via the formless Dharma realm of empty space. He continued, "You must apply these two types of Buddha offerings according to the proper time, place, and situation. If you continue exerting sincere effort until you are successful." There will be no wishes that are not fulfilled sooner or later. The student asked again, "How does one make a Buddha offering to truth?" So Dasan answered, "After cleansing your body and mind and making a vow before the Dharma Kaya Buddha, remove all distracting thoughts, single-mindedly offer up your sincerity." By entering samadhi in silence, reciting the Buddha's name or chanting a sutra, then you will not only fulfill your wishes, but you will also attain the ability to deliver sentient beings. For this to occur, every bone in your body must exert itself. And your wholehearted sincerity must pierce heaven. In this passage, Sutesan identified two forms of Buddha offerings: pragmatic offerings and spiritual offerings. We make spiritual offerings to truth by letting go of all distracting thoughts through meditation, chanting, and prayer. For example, during the last couple of weeks, as our hearts have gone out to the countless earthquake victims, many of us have offered sincere prayers, regardless of the forms and faith traditions. All these are spiritual Buddha offerings. At the same time. Numerous outreach organizations have been trying to help the victims in practical ways. In our temple community, forty-one friends made contributions to the One Buddhist Disaster Relief Fund. These are pragmatic Buddha offerings. Along with these two ways of making Buddha offerings in our practice journeys. Let us also remember to make Buddha offerings to our own minds, hearts, and bodies. After all, is it not our own minds, hearts, and bodies that become the source of offerings to others? If we neglect ourselves, will we not end up neglecting others? So in one Buddhist practice, Buddha offering to our minds, hearts, and bodies is essential practice. Let us pause now, and from the still silence, honor the Buddha within.